We'll talk about charts from this point on. We're about at the halfway point. So now we'll talk about trends. Trends are the foundation of what chart people, or technical analysts, are going to study. So we're going to move beyond, let's assume we've already analyzed, we have the companies that want to trade, Apple, whatever we're looking at, whatever it could be. Now let's talk about what makes a trend. What is it and how do we do it? Audience trends is actually quite simple. I know, I know, I've been in this for 14 years now. It's, it's simple to me, but we'll make it simple for you. It is actually one of the most useful skills as a technical analyst to learn. And why? Because price moves in trends. There was a great book published called A Random Walk Down Wall Street, and it basically argued that all stock price movement is just random, just like a person meandering down a street, maybe he's drunk, and so the price just moves here, it moves there, it's up one day, it's a red bar down the next, green bar, red bar, just, you know, random, no big deal. But trends prove that wrong. Trends exist in the stock market. So that actually defies that logic. Price movement's not random. This gives us an edge. Because price does move in trends. Not just stocks, which is the focus of our stocksessions.com, but those mutual funds we talked about, which is paying someone to buy stocks for you. Bonds, it's the same thing as like a loan. We'll talk about that later. Commodities like oil or gold or silver, those sort of things, cotton for that matter, and even real estate, the price of a home and a neighborhood or a state or a region, it tends to trend up, up, up. It kind of stalls at the top and then starts to trend lower. So even trends exist in the real estate market. Ask any realtor and they'll tell you that. Sometimes the market's really hot and it's easy to sell a home. That's an uptrend doing good. Sometimes it's really difficult and you can't sell a home no matter what you do. It's a downtrend getting worse. We as analysts and as investors, now that we're all in this game together, are going to analyze trends to find those exact spots to buy. Remember, fundamental or company analysis doesn't really tell us when to buy. Technical analysis, it does. Not just when to buy, but how to manage. Here's our goal. Spot a trend early, as soon as possible, and trade in or buy in the direction of that trend. Don't fight the trend. There's actually a saying we say in the, in the trading business, the trend is your friend. So in this session, we'll just learn how to spot that trend. We'll determine what, there's three of them. Uptrend, moving bottom to top over time. Downtrend, top moving to bottom. And sideways moving just flat like a horizon. Flat trend. It sounds simple, but and Jeffrey mentioned it, and that's really all this is. Connecting the dots. Right? That's it. Connecting the dots. That's as simple as it gets. So having this knowledge, why do I care about trends? Same thing. It gives you a buy signal, when to take your profit, when to stop your losses. If you're losing money in a position, and that happens sometimes, when to exit the position not just hold on and hope that it comes back. Got a trend reversal at the housing market. The stocks that go up, they will eventually stop and down. Trends, trend lines, and charts will help us to do that ahead of other people that don't use them. Fundamental analysts can't really call market tops for that matter. So let's go ahead and define an uptrend. So it's a sequence over time as Jeffrey said, this particular and all the examples here are weekly charts, higher highs over time, and higher lows. Apple, actually. So moving higher into the $90 per share and just had a breakout. This is July. So this actually just happened. Apple, AAPL, just broke out. But just from a trend, just forget what the stock is, forget what this company is for the moment. An uptrend moves left to right on the chart from here to there, moving from the bottom toward the top of the chart. And we would define that as a series of higher highs and higher lows. Not surprisingly, a downtrend moves, it's a sequence, it just means it goes in, in time, weekly chart here again, from the top left 
to the bottom right. Okay, we can see that easily, but let's be more scientific with it. It is a sequence of lower price highs, which are those, and lower price lows. That's it. That's a downtrend. This is the same chart of Apple, but this time we're showing it and seeing what it is without the trend. Just as you would see it on your charts if you pulled up Thinkorswim or any other uh, Meritrade or any other kind of charting platform. Left to right, higher highs. Sometimes it goes way down, but that's your trend basically. From left to right. This is 2009, 2014. Apple, in this case, as on the chart, moved from $15 per share to $95. That is clearly an uptrend. If you like Chipotle, Mexican Grill, Chipotle is actually a stock that is, or a company for that matter, that is doing quite well. It's beating McDonald's. There's a lot of reasons why that is. People prefer more healthy foods, quicker choices. You actually get more food for a fair price. It's healthier. All those components, but that's just the fundamental analysis. It is a good company, a better company, for perhaps maybe, than a lot of other similar restaurants, particularly fast food restaurants. We can know that from the fundamentals of the company an analysis or simply from the chart, because this stock traded at $50 per share in 2009, and right now it's at $650. You know, I traded Chipotle a few times. I didn't buy the whole thing here or there, but I did take part in this. And so that's, you know, good, but I didn't get the whole move. And that's what we're trying to find. Good stocks, competitive advantage, which isn't enough. We actually find buy signals on their price chart. So if you're really interested in what makes a trend, what makes a trend? It's just price itself. If we go back to the price, price that the stock traded at that particular week. When the week was over on Friday, boom, they closed that and said, that's a dot on the chart. So every week is a dot, and it would just draw the lines that connect them. That's really all the chart is. And those dots move. So supply, or those who sell the stock, and demand, those who buy the stock. So over time, over time, the buyers and sellers interact. So more buyers, more aggressive buyers, that creates uptrends. More aggressive sellers, if you think of like a seesaw, that creates a downtrend. And over time, good companies tend to get better. They tend to attract money. What did we mention earlier about the bandwagon effect? About how people, they tell their friends, oh, I'm in Chipotle, you should be in Chipotle too. Well, they go and they buy Chipotle or Apple or Microsoft or Google for that matter. So that kind of fuels this feedback loop which is just saying another word for higher prices create happiness, happy buyers, and they tell people or the stock gets better and they make more money, so on and so forth, and the stock trends. Or they say, don't buy this stock, and the stocks go lower. Price moves in trends. It's not random, and for the most part, it's by the herd effect. Yes. Yeah, I need some microphone for the question so we can hear you. Does the chart only reflect um, the buying and selling of stocks for the company, or does it also reflect the revenue of the actual company? That's a wonderful question. This, the chart, and that's what we're talking about for the chart analysis, this is only going to say what the price of the stock, right? Not about the earnings. That's completely separate. That's the different area of fundamental analysis. This is just the chart. So that's actually a good question, yes. The earnings don't play into this. Listen, the, the earnings are not shown on this chart. You actually can, Jeffrey saw this, mentioned the charts. You can, if you want to, add that function on your chart and say, what was the earnings? Was it good or bad? You can actually display that and display revenue on a chart over time. But yeah, this is just the price itself. So to kind of conclude, I'll tease you with this one. We'll go too much in this section here, but price, Stocks, they have a life cycle, just like we do. We're born, we go through adolescence, we get mature, we become adults, and then death is such a bad word, you know, moving on to the next stage, or whatever you want to call it. So birth, maturity, and the final or the topping for a stock, it tends to roll over and trade lower, just kind of getting your interest here. So we like to find stocks that are trending higher but not stocks that, as we'll see the next lesson actually, break their trend line. We'll see how trend lines help us with this.
and one more. This is the same thing. Phase one, we'll call it phase one to make it easier. Initial sideways, up, uptrend, and there's your topping of phase three and boom. Charts help us with this and we're going to teach that next.